Hello, hello, and welcome to Flow. Uh, got an interesting one for you guys today. Underslung GoPro. You might be looking at this going like, uh, there's a reason behind it. I've not just gone mad and put it on the bottom of the drone. Sometimes when I'm flying along and I'm trying to get that, that real low, epic looking footage, um, I'm seeing through this, this camera at the front here, the FPV camera. And I'm flying so low, I'm thinking I'm going to hit the ground any second. I'm like brushing the tips of the grass with the propellers. And then I go back and look at the GoPro footage, and it doesn't look that great. The reason is, if you look between here and the center of the GoPro, that's like, a, I don't know, a good five, six, seven centimeters. With a wide angle lens, that makes quite a big difference. So. I've kind of jerry-rigged this a little bit with the mount on the bottom here. Risking the GoPro slightly, I put the uh, ND2 filter on here, the one I care about the least, I'm probably never gonna use. So it's in the case, it should be protected. Let's give it a go. I'm not even sure how this is gonna take off, but uh, I guess I'll just go for it. Is it going to affect the balance? It's going to be leaning forwards a little bit. Ah, uh, you know what? It doesn't feel that different. Man, I'm going super, super carefully. Of course, one thing I really didn't think about too much as well is landing. When I come back in, I'm going to have to do it really slow and then just pop it on the ground. Okay, handling still feels pretty good. Yeah, we're all, we're all fine. Okay. <laughs> I really wasn't that sure, honestly. When I, when I set off, I was like, is this thing just going to be tilting forwards? But obviously the, uh, the drone's got a, a gyroscope in it, so it can tell when it's leaning and it'll, um, it'll balance itself sort of a little bit okay it's probably making the front motors work yeah actually with it being front heavy it's almost certainly making the front motors work a little bit harder but then again is this balance really that different to having the GoPro like the weight uh, on top is it really any different I don't think it will be okay now I guess I've just got to fly it as low as I can. How does that look? Uh, I want to fly it lower, but I know at some point... Here you go, let's have a look. At some point the GoPro is going to touch the ground and then I'm going to face plant really hard. I guess that's the downside is I don't know exactly where the point is that it's going to go. At least with the uh, the onboard camera I can tell when I'm close to the ground. Here I'm like is it going to is it going to Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Come on Josh. I guess I could just touch it down to the ground and see, oh, touch it. That was not touching. Oh man, I can get, I can get pretty low. Okay, let me just check that the, uh, the GoPro is still intact. <laughs> still at a good-ish. Uh, I feel like it's pointing down to the floor quite a lot. Let's put it up a bit. See, I don't want to be able to see the propellers. There, the propellers just in the top corner. Okay, let's try that. A bit more of an angle, see if we can get a bit go.
Yeah, this battery's almost done. Just trying to get, there we go. I feel like this is pretty low now. How's it look? Does it look good? Honestly, I could probably get used to it. Uh, if it looks decent, I can get a uh, another mount made. I think I'll have to crop the image a little bit just to try and get rid of the, um, the propellers in the corner. But to be honest with you, with a 4K image, that really wouldn't be an issue at all. Um, I could get used to the new height of it and know not to fly too close to the ground. Handling seems totally fine to be honest. Okay. I'm going to come in and try and land. Really gently. I'll take a quick look at the video as well, uh, just preview it on my phone and then perfect. We'll see what the angle's like. Yeah, honestly, uh, I don't know what you guys thought to that, but I actually thought that was pretty good. I can get super low to the ground. I'm just coming back in because uh, I bumped it. I want to check the angle. Yeah, see, okay. The problem is that this moves really quite easily. So, uh, how's that? Okay. I'm actually going to jack the angle up a little bit more. There we go. So the propellers are in frame at the minute, but because I'm recording at 24, because I'm recording at 24 frames per second, and these are spinning around at like thousands of uh, RPM, I don't think this going to be a problem. I don't think you'll actually see them at all. Let's put that to the test. Genuinely, I think this could be a new way of mounting my GoPro. All I need to do is basically just keep flying and practicing and, and work out where the, the low point is. Because it's no longer where I think it is on the camera, if that makes sense. But like, I don't know about you, I was pretty impressed with that footage. Ignore the fact that the whites were all blown out and the clouds looked awful, etc, etc. Ignore what the actual footage looks like, and like I could fix that anyway uh, in post. But just have a look at the proximity of the flying, and um, I think that was pretty good. Yeah, we're getting low. We're getting low. Ooh, -hoo. I think it's about here. I'll have a look again, it's probably lower, but... Man, this is interesting. Okay. Maybe I should look at getting another mount printed for the bottom of the GoPro. This is a horrible feeling though, because I'm just flying along, trying to get as low as possible and knowing that at any point, any second, it could dip down a little bit too low. It'll catch the GoPro at the front. And then I get that feeling like, you know, when you go over your handlebars on a bike. <laughs> okay. You know what? This has been a, uh, a fun experiment. 
I think I've learned something and it was worth trying out. I kind of thought, nah, there's no way, you know, the quad will just not fly or, or whatever, but actually there's benefits to it. The downsides, of course, are the GoPro is now really in the firing line. Anytime I crash, uh, you know, I'd say probably 90% of the time I crash, some part of the bottom of the frame hits the ground, right? Because I normally, you know, I'll do something like this and I'll manage to correct it to at least something like that as I'm crashing. Um, it's extremely rare that I crash completely sideways on or completely upside down. In fact, I'm not even sure if I crashed completely upside down or like, you know, head on. So it does put the GoPro in a bit more of a, a risky place. Oh, I got low then. Oh look, you can see the shadow. You can see the... How funny does that look? Yeah, the sun's come out. Yeah, um, but with this aluminium case on, is that going to be an issue? You know? Is it really going to have that much of a problem? I guess I wouldn't fly... I'd fly over grass, no problem. Would I fly over concrete like this? Or buildings? No. Because then the first thing that's going to... I mean, I'm just going to smash the lens straight away. Hey, I can actually use the shadow to tell. Hey, that's neat. Let's have one of the go at that. Quick, get back before this battery runs out. I can use my shadow to see how far I am above the ground. There's pretty good. Okay. Just two packs today, guys. Uh, I'm going to do some other stuff with the quad whilst I got it out here, but I hope you enjoyed that one. Definitely found something interesting that I hadn't really thought about too much. Like I said, that was just a bit of a go on, chuck it on, try it. Oh, oh, stop bumping the GoPro, John. But hey, maybe this could be something we look at a little bit more in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you next week.